I think, uh, you know, first of all, um, for me, it's obviously exciting first first signing day for us here. It's, it's been a whirlwind the last uh, two and a half weeks, um, building out staff and, and continue to do that. You guys have seen some of the announcements we've made in, in that regard. Um, he actually had a day yesterday to ride around, check out some houses uh, in the area. So that was, that was fun. The first time really being out, hadn't really been out hotel and in, in, in the complex. But, uh, you know, but I think for us is, you know, trying to get quality players in here, quality people. I think that, um, and, and we've been able to accomplish that today um, with, with this signing class. We, we've got some high school players. We've also got some guys out of the portal um, that I think will certainly help us um, hopefully immediately. Um, and then we're not done. I think that's probably the biggest message. I mean, we're not done. I mean, we're going to continue recruiting. Um, I don't think you're ever really done recruiting. I think you have to recruit all the time. You got to continue to do that. So we'll certainly at this stage now, um, really looking more in the portal. Uh, guys, uh, over the next couple of weeks, we know in January, we're gonna be able to, to bring some more on campus to you know, January 4th through the 8th. Um, and then of course we start the 9th. So we'll, we'll see where that's at, but you know, we're certainly not done. We're gonna continue on and uh, you know, we're just excited about it. And uh, you know, I'm just I'm re I'm ready to go, uh, go get some more players. I think that's our whole focus is trying to find players to come here and help us compete in the Big 12. Coach, yeah. you, you addressed quarterback through the portal and through the high school ranks. Uh, what can you tell us about Emory Jones, Florida and, and Arizona State's got starting experience and then uh, four-star Brady Drogish out of Michigan? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Brady, uh, we're, we're fired up about Brady. I, you know, when I, when I first got here, I'm watching the, the film, a lot of these guys, and, and uh, man, I, I, was, I thought he was good. When I watched the film, I was really, really – um, pleased to see him the way he can run, he can throw. He, he's, a, he's a winner. I mean, he's won state championship in basketball as well as football twice. And uh, and then getting around him and his family, um, I think it's a great fit for us um, in his skill set. So really excited about that. You know, we felt we needed to go out and, and try to get a player that, that has a lot of experience and has played a lot of big time ball. And, uh, and Emory Jones fits that. You know, Emory's a guy who's played in the SEC. He's won big games in the SEC. He's going out and playing Arizona State. Tough situation out there. The things that happen. Um, you know, with the coaching uh, aspect in that regard. Um, but, I, but I do think he's got a, a tremendous upside. He's got a lot of talent. He's got a, a really good arm. He can run as well. So he kind of fits what we want with that. Um, and I also believe it's important to be able to land a quarterback uh, like of his caliber at this stage to be able to help us in the wide receiver room. We, we know we gotta, we got to help that room. Um, we got to get some players in here that have played. So I think over the coming you know, weeks, we'll be able to um, get some players to come in here and help us next year, but it, it was very important because the guys were talking to us, who's your quarterback, you know, and and certainly with the guys we have on campus here now, uh, but also, you know, you have to have you have to have multiple quarterbacks, I think, in order to be able to compete. Because we saw this year um, across the country, you got, you know, it happened in a bowl game. You know, you got two backup quarterbacks that are playing in a bowl game, so you better have guys that can that can play and continue to compete at a high level. Transfer offensive line addressed that twice, Luke Kandra and Trevor. Radosovic, did I get that right? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> How important is it to stock that room and, and get some guys in here that can help right away? Well, we, we need to be able to do that. You know, as we as we came in and kind of you know looked at the roster, there were, there were some guys that were the senior category that's not going to be here. So you got to continue to bring guys in that have played and that can play that can help us. We feel like both of these players can come in and help us in the interior. As you look at guard and center, um, I just think again. You better have some guys with some depth is there as well. Um, you know, we love to have seven or eight guys that we could actually play and rotate in, but we feel like these guys can come in here and be have immediate impact on our team. And we're not done there yet. As you know, we I think we're going to look to get, try to get a, maybe a tackle in the portal as well and come here and help us at the offensive tackle position. What's your approach when you take the job and know you only have two and a half weeks before kind of the early signing day? How do you approach that transition? Man, you, you're hitting it wide open fast as you can go. I mean, the thing about it is you have to hire some staff first um, to, to start recruiting. I mean, I, you just can't do it from one person. So, so I was trying to get some staff in here to be able to help um, because also the recruits that are on your team, because you got to recruit them as well, um, and the recruits that are they're coming out of high school, they want to know who's going to coach them, you know, and, and the relationship that you have with these players. Um, I think that is huge. And so to be able to get a few coaches in here, um, to be able to, you know, keep Coach Combs, um, you know, I think was huge. Um, but to get those coaches in here to be able to talk to these guys, to talk to the players on our team, um, and, and I think that was, that was kind of the first priority. Um, we were able to do that. We had a huge weekend with a lot of these guys that were committed here before and had great conversation over the weekend, got to know them, they got to know us. Um, and I think we all we wanted to all feel good about it, you know, both ways. And I think we did. It was some great families. They did a really good job of 
you know, selecting some of these players and, um, you know, and, and I think, and then we had two guys that were committed to us at, at Louisville, you know, that, that we were able to, to switch over as well. Um, you know, Raekwon and Jaden. And uh, Jaden had a, an awesome day at the, at the All-Star game the other day with two interceptions, seven tackles. We're really excited about him coming in here into our defensive backfield. You, uh, I got one more, sorry. There's a couple of commits who haven't announced yet. Do you anticipate adding a few names still today? We will. We will. Uh, yeah, there's a few guys that that have actually turned in their paperwork, but they, they're going to have their, their own deal uh, at their high schools. And, uh, you know, which is kind of exciting for us. There's some good players. There's some players that, maybe people hadn't heard of that that'll be jumping in the boat here and uh so we're excited about them as well so we're going to let them have their time you know and and this afternoon or, or evening um so we will be adding to this in the high school ranks as well as some more um in the portal too as we come a few more days you alluded to recruiting being a marathon and i know you've only been here a couple of weeks but this is the first real checkpoint how would you grade how yourself yeah. and your staff has done so far well, I mean, I, I don't think you ever hit it as, as, as good as you want to hit it. I mean, I, I think we want to continue to, to get great players. And that's why, to me, this is this is like a starting point. Um, but we're, we're not done. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep finding players um, that can come in here and help us compete. Uh, you know, because the thing as a coach is you sit there. I, I, all I can envision right now is, is next fall lining up and playing the teams we're going to have to play. And, and the kind of players that I know is going to be coming off that sideline that's going to go on that field is going to help us compete and win. I mean, that's, that's all I can think about. You know, if you wait till the fall gets here, it's too late. I mean, so, like, I've been impressed on our coaches and everybody in, our, in the building. You know, we got to recruit. We got to recruit. I mean, you know, and, and I say recruit. It's our players. It's our players, too, here. Like, we got we to make sure they're going to feel comfortable to, to play for us and be a part of this, this process. So, um, that's what we're doing right now. We, you know, we're going to have some Christmas break here, but but our phones are going to be on and ready to go because um, you got to continue to have those relationships, continue to talk to players, and you know it's going to be a short window between now and January 9th before we start back. When we last chatted after your introductory, introductory press conference, you said that we have to have our feet on the ground here in Cincinnati mm -hmm. because of all the talent. No high school players from Cincinnati so far committed. Why is that? Well, I mean, again, a lot of the players that, that are on this, this signing list right here, were they were committed before, um, you know, and and that that's kind of – you don't have time to come in here in one week and go get in the high schools right here and go get – you just don't, you know. So, you know, the, a lot of this work right here happened a year ago. Um, you know, the class that the Louisville signed this year happened a year and a half ago that we were building out. So, I mean – it's, it's something that it takes time. We're going to be in there. We're going to we're going to be all over the city. We're going to be all over the state. Um, and and I can't wait to just get that going in January. When we get back in here. We get our staff in here. We're going to be all out. Um, you know. And and so you know, it's a short period of time to be able to come in here and sign high school players. You know, from the, this area. But we're certainly that's going to be a huge priority for us. Um, and we're going to make that happen once we get back in January. Bringing in two quarterbacks today, how do you foresee that maybe impacting the quarterbacks who are currently on the roster, most notably a guy like Evan Prater? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think it remains to be seen. I mean, obviously that'll be up to Evan and his family and, and you know, and, and the players that are on this team. But, you know, we're, we're going to need quarterbacks. You know, I, you know, hopefully they'll be here and hopefully they'll go through spring practice with us and we'll get to coach them and, and develop them and see where we're at with everything. But, you know, that, that's the one, that position – is one of the most critical positions in all in all sports in the football, right? I mean, it doesn't matter what level. It's rec league, pros, college, whatever. You better have a, some quarterbacks. And nowadays, it is hard to keep, you know, three, four, five quarterbacks on the roster. You know, it's it's usually it's one guy that's going to play. And, you know, throughout a season, you may end up playing two or three, depending on injuries. But, um, you know, they all want to play. I get that. They all want to be the guy. And, and, I'm, and I tell quarterbacks every year, listen, I – you know, I, I'm pulling for everybody in the room. We're going to try to play the best player we got to help us win games. And so the thing that they'll know here is that they're going to get an opportunity to compete and they're going to get a chance and we're going to play the best, whoever that is. And so I think any, anybody that, that has been in any of our, my program or around us is know we're going to play the best player. I'm pulling for all of you, but, hey, whoever's the best is going to go out there and play. In the bowl game, the roster missing the top six pass catchers by statistics this season, obviously tight ends included there. But – Wide receiver, tight end, is that kind of a, the two position groups you're really focusing on in the portal to add guys that can impact yeah. right away? Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. You know, we, we, we lost a lot um, as you looked at the game. I mean, there's you know not much experience out there, not many guys that had produced much this past fall. And, and so that's certainly going to be a, a position of need. You know, we're going to have to get some guys that have played in college football to come in here and help us in that, in that regard. Um, you got to have playmakers at wide receiver, and certainly for us, we love using tight ends. Uh, I think tight ends have been a huge part of our offense, you know, for a long time. 
you know, so we're going to be able to get some guys in here. So that will be a huge problem over the next two weeks. You get a guy like Dorian James to come follow you from Louisville. Just talk about what you've been able to see from him over the last two years and how special of a player he will be for this team. Yeah, I mean, Dorian, he, he's a... Uh, He's been a hard worker. He's kind of been a guy, you know, that red-shirted, kind of worked his way up this past season, played a ton of football for us at Louisville. He's a very physical player, a downhill player. Um, he has really good size. You know, he's you know close to 240, um, strong. He's a thumper. Um, you know, I, I think, um, you know, he's, he's a guy that can come in here and help us. Um, you know, and I think he, he knows our system. He's been in it. Um, you know, I think, uh, I think we're excited about what he can bring to the table. And for him, it was an opportunity to play the same defense and get coached by guys that he knows. Um, and, and so, yeah, I'm, we're excited about him getting in here in January and, and, and hit the ground running. Raekwon Atkins and Jaden Davis, guys maybe the fan base doesn't know as much yeah. about because they, they came with you uh, from your Louisville class. What can you tell us about those two? Yeah, Raekwon is a, is a guy who's a, a ball hawk. Um, not very big, you know, uh, obviously once he gets to college, we'll, we'll develop him and get some more size on him. But he's got a knack for the ball. He's got great hands. Uh, I, you know, I love having DBs that have great hands because they can, they can get the ball back for you as opposed to, you know, playing volleyball and knocking it down. But, but we want those guys that can catch the ball in the back end. He is that for sure. Uh, I think he's a guy that can play nickel. He can play corner. So he's a very versatile back there um, to be able to do a lot of different things. A very confident player, so I mean, you know, excited about what he's going to be able to bring to the table. And Jaden Davis, I think, he's got a huge upside. He's a guy that's, that's six two um, and a half, probably. Um, he's he's skinny right now. Again, he'll be a guy that that fills out, but he can run it. And he was a really good receiver as well. Like, he can catch the ball. Um, as, another guy, as as showed in the in the in the All Star game that he played in with two interceptions. Um, you know, the ability that you guys watched Louisville last year. I think we had the most takeaways in the country last year at Louisville. I mean, I think that's a huge um, thing that you want to be able to do defensively, take the ball away, but you have to have guys that can do that. And if both of these guys are going to be able to come in here um, and be able to get interceptions, and I think that's going to be huge for us. And they're, and they're both great people. We've been recruiting for a long time, um, and they're going to fit in very well here. Evan Tingestall, uh, what did you see from him when you watched the tape that – that made you excited about him. He's one of the best interior offensive linemen recruits in the country. Yeah, I think, you know, he, he has good size. And again, you know, you're looking at where is he going to be at. I think potential wise, you know, he's going to be a kid that's going to be over 300 pounds. He's going to bring that that physical brand of blocking up front that we're going to want to have. You know, we're we're really a big inside outside zone <coughs> team. And I think his physical presence is going to be able to bring that. And, you know, some people look at the spread offense and they well, we don't want to be physical. That's not the case. We want to be nasty, physical. I think he's going to be able to bring that to the table. Um, as an interior player, and I think he's going to have the size now. And hopefully, you know, he'll have the ability to come in here and help us early. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, I hope, and I, we'll see once he gets on campus. But he certainly has the ability to do that. Um, so we're excited about what he brings as well. The two Ironton kids, Ty Perkins, Tyler Car or Trevor Carter. Uh, what, did, what, what, are, what are your reads on those two guys? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I, I haven't met Trevor in person. Carter, he did, was not unable to come up on the visit. You know, Ty was able to come up. Ty's long, got, got long arms. Um, you know, he's got really, really good hands. Um, you know, they're winners, both of them, you know, coming from a program that, that, that's winning. Um, you know, I think um, I, I'm excited about what they're going to be able to come here and bring to the table, too, that, that work ethic, that toughness. Um, you know, and, and bring to our team. I think Ty's certainly an opportunity to come in here. I mean, again, depends on what we can bring out of the portal, but the wide receiver is a, it's a huge position of need um, for him to be here. I think, man, we're excited about him to, to come in here and, and hit the ground running right when he gets here. And, and of course, Trevor's a guy who's going to have to put on some weight once he gets here. Um, I feel like, you know, once we get into the weight program, and we've seen it over, over, over time where they'll, they'll put on, he'll put on 10, 15 pounds easy first year. Be pushing that 2, 220, 225 mark um, and, and really be that, that really good inside linebacker that we're going to need. Finally, Brian Sims, uh, you guys were one of the top sack teams in the country. Yeah. Does he does he fit what you're looking to yeah, do? Yeah, I think so. And I think he was excited about that as we're showing some film, kind of what we're doing defensively. He was really excited about that. He's a guy that's got really good length, has a really good motor, um, uh, comes from a great program. The, the competition they played this past season, some of the best in the country. Uh, so I think he's not going to be in awe coming into a college program. He's going to be able to come in, have the confidence to be able to compete early. Uh, so I'm excited about to see what he's, he's going to be able to bring to the table. We're certainly going to need some pass rushers. I think that's going to be huge for us um, as we look toward the future for him. He'll, he'll be one of those guys that can get to the passer. I think that's what excites me the most about him. You talk about playing for a great program. Is that something that's high up on your 
chart when you're when you're recruiting like kids, it. guys like that have it. won a lot? Yeah, I like it. You know, they're used to winning. You know, and I, I think what we've found over the years when they come from those type programs, um, they're used to working hard. Like, you, you know, usually in programs, you just don't show up and go win a lot of games. You, you have to work hard. The off seasons are going to be hard for them. They're used to that. Um, and they've probably been coached hard as well. And so once they get into the college program, there's a less transition for those type players. They're going to come in here. They've already been coached hard. They know how to work. They're just used to that. They, they know this is what we have to do as opposed to if you get a player from a program that maybe hadn't won as much, maybe not sure about what it's going to take to win. Um, you know, so I think it is very important. I also like trying to get guys in leadership roles at their high school. They've been leaders. They've been captains. Um, those are kind of players that translate to great players as well once they get to college. You're able to hold on to a handful of commits to the previous staff. Obviously, I'm sure there's some level of connection with, with you and your new staff. What did you hear from those guys about the program and the university that clearly still meant something to them? Yeah, I mean, I think they, they, they committed. You know, I think this day and age, it's, it's obviously a debate. You know, are you, are you committing to the school and the city or are you committing to the coaches? I think that's, that is a debate. And I think, I think it's different for different, different kids. You know, I mean, come some, some recruits are straight relationship oriented. I think some just love where the school's at, the, the area, what type of school it is. Um, I do think the fact of, that these players, they, they love where the school is at. They love where we're going. Um, they love we're going into the Big 12. They love the fact that this stadium's awesome you know, to play in and play in front of these people, I think. And then once they got around our staff, I just think they felt comfortable to say, hey, you know, I did love all that stuff about it, but now I, I like these coaches too. I like what they're bringing, they're playing. Um, and it was just a good fit, you know, because I think – you know, some guys decided, hey, maybe it's not a fit for them, you know, and they're going to go somewhere else. And I think I'm fine with that. You know, I, I want it to be a good fit. It's like, uh, you know, you don't, want to, you don't want somebody to come here just because. Like, I want them to be here because they want to be here. Um, and, and I think that that's going to be huge for us as we move forward. I want guys that want to, want to be a Cincinnati Bearcat. That, like, that's what I want, you know. So if they're, that's why we got to hit this city hard. That's why we got to hit this state hard so, because there's a lot of pride in that. And they want to come play for us, and they want to make us great. So let, let's get those players, you know. And I think that's going to be huge for us. That's going to be our message as we head out in January. You knew you were going to have to hit the portal hard, I'm mm -hmm. sure, when you took the job. In terms of how it broke down with early signing day, do you like the balance that you had with, with some of these 2023 kids? Did you maybe get more than you thought or less than you thought? You know, I, I think it's probably going to be, end up being about what I thought. You know, once this evening's over, we get some, we announce a few bit more. You know, it's 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 always tough in transition. You know, it's it just is. Um, I do think the portal nowadays um, is a huge factor in college football, whether you like it or not. You know, it's a factor. You have to embrace it, and every team throughout the country probably is going to embrace that. They're going to bring some more than others. Um, but I do want to be a program where we're bringing high school players in, and we can continue to develop. You know, we want to develop. I love developing players. So if we can continue to do that, but we know every year there's going to be needs where we're going to have to go into the portal, get a guy that's got experience, that's played college football, to come in here and help you. I mean, I, I really believe that as well. So it's got to be a good balance between the two. And, um, you know, and hopefully we're, we're having a program here where we're not losing as many players too. You know, that, that's another thing that we want to try to continue to keep our players, continue to develop them, which is harder and harder in today's landscape. Any other questions? Chad, you got one? Yeah. Russ. <clears throat> Coach, is there anything you've learned in this kind of whirlwind transition this time around compared to what it was like transitioning from Appalachian State to Louisville? Is there any lessons you've learned or well, things you've changed? Well, it, it was really different. When I, when I left App to go to, to Louisville, it was you didn't have the portal. I mean, I, that's, that's huge. I mean, there's probably some players that we had that would have came, you know, come over to Louisville. But this, this, this world now, I mean, ever since COVID, it's completely changed college football because, you, you know, the COVID year, Obviously, it was very different, but that's when everything happened. The NIL, transfer, um, you know, where is this going to stop? How is it, it going to go? How is it going to keep going? The landscape, the conferences have moved. There's so many things that are different now. There's really no comparison. Um, you know, but, but we have learned over the last couple of years about this point, about, about how this stuff's working. Um, and, and, we've, and we've kind of embraced it. You know, I, I don't necessarily like it, but it is what it is. And, and we've embraced it, and we're going to try to make the best of it. Now that we're kind of on the other side of signing day, is there any timeline for filling out the rest of your staff? Do you have a window you'd like to do that, or is it just as it as it develops? Yeah, I mean, I, it'll obviously be as, as it develops, but we're getting close. I, I think um, but the plan is by January 3rd to have, to have most everything in place when we get back here. Um, January 3rd, school starts the 9th. Um, we'll bring some more players in the 4th. So I kind of want to have most everything in place January 3rd. Um, so as we move forward in that, in that recruiting period right there, 
that the players we're recruiting know who their coach is, and I think that's going to be important. So, so I think by January 3rd, we'll have a great, great idea who everybody's going to be. You mentioned a few times now that with COVID, so much has changed mm -hmm. with college football. And with all of your experience in the game, for you personally, how difficult has that transition been since COVID changed so much? Extremely. You know, every coach that last year, when I talked to the head coaches pre-game, we're all, we're all saying the same thing. It's like, you don't even know what to say. It's like, you know, this is crazy. You know, it's crazy that the world that we're in right now because, you know, you can have great players on your team that love your program and they still may want to test the waters in, in, in the transfer world. Um, you know, we've seen it this, this, this off season, uh, you know, this, the most ever that's been in the, in the portal, you know, and, um, and I think, I, I, I don't know where the end is. I don't know what's going to happen as we move forward. Um, I don't really blame some of these players. You know, uh, they're, they're getting an opportunity to, to make a lot of money at, at some schools out there. Um, and particularly if I'm a really good player in a school that maybe they've not tapped into the NIL, wor our wor NIL world a lot. So they're, they're going to test that, you know. And, and then we're hearing stories now of, you know, the quarterback at North Carolina, North, North Carolina. I mean, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the country. I mean, people are trying to come in and, you know, pay him millions of dollars, you know. And so that's, you know, Coach Brown, Mac Brown's having a hard time. You know, it's like, so that's what we're dealing with. And, and it's not getting any easier for coaches. One of the hardest things that we have to deal with is roster management, year in and year out now. Um, and so now, so what that means is recruiting departments on college campuses have to grow. So we're, we're growing ours here. It'll be the biggest it's ever been. And it has to be because, you know, because you, again, you have to recruit your players. You have to recruit the high school players. You got to recruit the portal. You got you to see who's going to be leaving. You got to scout other colleges out there. I mean, you know, so there's so many things and, aspects since COVID has started with these new rules that we have to implement in these programs. Earlier in this press conference, I thought it was really interesting that you said you have to recruit your own players. Yes. What's your pitch? What, what, how do you recruit your own players? Well, these players here, we kind of the pitch is, hey, we've been we've been very successful in things that we've been able to do. And here's where we see you within that. Um, we think you have a, you're a good fit for us. Uh, you know, we're excited about it, uh, what we're going to be bringing in. It's going to help this team continue to compete. Um, but this is going to be going, this, this goes on every year. I mean, last year, I just remember in Louisville last year, I, you know, throughout December, it used to be after the bowl game, you could relax at least a little bit, but the whole time we're calling our players, saying, hey, you good? You, you leaving? You know? so, so you're recruiting your own players every year. Um, and a lot goes into that. So a lot goes into these players right here. So there's, there's a lot of these players that want to play next year. Some of them won't be ready. Some of them are going to need to develop and go through a red shirt year. And, but we're going to have to play some of them, you know, because, hey, get a little test of it, get them, let them play a little bit, you know. So there's, there's just a fine line there. So I think that, that's, that's what I mean with roster management, with coaching now. It's completely different than it was before all this opened up. So it's like more people management. It's, it's, it's definitely a lot more of that. Um, a lot more of, hey, I'm, I'm the running back coach. I'm, I'm bringing my running backs in on a weekly basis just to, just to talk, just find out where your head's at. You know, it's just it's a lot more of that than maybe it used to be. Um, you know, and I think we're also in a world now with, with the internet and the phone, and it is, is everybody wants it now, or they, they want it yesterday, actually, right? And so it's hard, you know, because a guy maybe is not ready, but hey, you're going to be great, man. You're going to be a great player. It's just not right now. You know, you got to keep developing every single day. And that's hard for, for young people sometimes. It's also hard for maybe whoever's in their ear, ear, you know, parents or whoever else is in their ear to say, he's supposed to be playing. Well, you know, you're not quite ready yet, you know. And so, so those are the dynamics that we're all dealing with as coaches now that maybe were not this way three or four years ago. All right. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Yep. Thanks.